the west front of St. Paul's, cleansed of its grime, was a new sight to onlookers and the 3,000 people attending the memorial service to John Fitzgerald Kennedy. In London's cathedral, this was London's tribute to a great leader. And at this place, London represented the whole country. Canon Collins took part in the service. Mr. Butler arriving. People of all parties attended. That prominent member of the opposition, Tom Driver. Mr. Nubar Gulbenkian, the oil king. The leader of the Labour Party, Mr. Harold Wilson. Already there was an older leader, Lord Attlee. Lady Churchill was escorted by her son, Randolph. Mr. Macmillan and Lady Dorothy. How pleasing it was to see him again. The Prime Minister and Lady Douglas Hume. The American Ambassador, Mr. David Bruce. In St. Paul's, special honor is accorded to the Lord Mayor. Alderman Harmon was attended by the sheriffs and other city dignitaries. Clergy greeted the royal arrivals. Here, Princess Marina and Princess Alice. Princess Margaret and the Earl of Snowdon. The Duchess of Gloucester. And to pay tribute from the East, the Ambassador of Saudi Arabia. The Duke of Edinburgh represented the Queen. By every race and every creed, the President is mourned. Tribute to him was paid not only by the 3,000 people in St. Paul's and those outside, but also by the whole population of Great Britain. 350 American servicemen and their wives were invited by the Queen to a memorial service in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. They are on service overseas, protecting the rights of free peoples so dear to Mr. Kennedy's heart. Among the congregation of 900 were guardsmen of all ranks. The Queen herself was there, paying homage to the memory of a great man, deprived of life so tragically early. We shall remember.